consists of three components, essentially, uh, which is implications, uh, visions, and strategies. So what I'd like to do is that we cover these uh, issues one by one, each time for about 25 minutes. And I'm going to ask uh, the panelists to limit their initial intervention to about three minutes, three, four minutes, so that we have some time between us to talk. And then overall, uh, we will open up uh, the floor towards the end, and maybe we will have about 15 minutes uh, to receive questions from you. OK, with this introduction, now let me turn to uh, first, uh, yeah, let's see, since uh, he's not here, Dr. Panish Patti. May I ask you? Panish Patti, for you to start. Oh. MD, MD. So this is the Prime Minister of the Republic. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, I guess the process of economic evolution has been part of the explanatory factors why some parts of Asia, North, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, have been lagging behind when the Industrial Revolution was introduced in the 19th century to Europe. There was not a, a case of assign some blame to anybody. If you would have read some books uh, from right after the Second World War on economic development, you would have been told by the theory of labor surplus economy. On the basis of labor surplus economies, Asian population so huge and massive as it was, we depended greatly on the exploitation of the sheep labor force for a long period of time. Well, thank you very much. Um, I remember looking at the uh, latest World Economic Outlook by the IMF, and I think um, they're projecting that uh, by 2015, roughly, the, the GDP of emerging economies plus a lot of countries will exceed those of the G7. Uh, and by TPP based exchange rate, they've already exceeded a couple of years ago. So you're right that uh, the global gravity is shifting. Very interesting comments. Thank, thank you very much. So, last but not least, uh, Ms. Mandela. I promise to be short contribution now. Um, I think this, uh, this, the importance of this conference cannot be underestimated. It reminds us of one of the underlying business stories of our age, and that's also the international energy economy, which is rebalancing ever more to the East. And in my in the answer to your next question, I will go more to that in detail. Thank you. Dr. Prime Minister. Uh, what Korea should do in terms of moving this idea ahead, practical terms? We all know that uh, Korean people are very practical. And uh, even un unimaginable plans realized. Who knew 20 years ago what Samsung and Hyundai will be these days? And I believe with the Korean initiative, with your practicism, pragmatism, this idea will move forward. And uh, I believe all countries will get big interest in pushing ahead this idea. Uh, and uh, one of the practical things which Korea did is, if Korea is one of the unique countries which overcame middle income trap. In 75, uh, South Africa, Korea, and Brazil had uh, around three, four thousand dollars per capita, and uh, South Africa and Brazil still maintaining GDP at the same level per capita. So Korea's one is quadruple, at least. And maybe problems in Russia is is, is related these days with this situation, and. Uh, part of the countries entering into this middle income trap story, maybe uh, by advising your model how to move ahead with this problem, uh, this Eurasian model will start work. Because synergy and communication cooperation in a larger scale would work if countries, regions will see practical uh, cases of improvements. And then success story could move ahead. And then we will achieve our final form. 
And again, the, as an example of Korean efficiency, I would like to uh, thank our moderator for excellent moderation, time, and especially conflict management. Again, uh, the indication of Korean practicality and efficiency. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with this uh, nice remark, we've reached the end of this session. Please join me in giving big hands to our panelists.